All right, football fans, let's talk about something that'll blow your mind. We all know Messi is a genius on the pitch. The goals, the dribbles, the vision, it's all there. The eye test is one thing, but what does the data say? Just how far ahead is he when compared to others? Well, that's where things get crazy. Because when analysts plot out player stats on a graph, whether it's goals versus assists or dribbles versus chances created, there's one tiny dot that keeps ruining the scale. And it's always in the same place, the top right. This recurring phenomenon has earned a nickname in the football analytics world, Top Right Messi. It's part meme, part data science inside joke, and part mind-blowing reality. In this video, we're diving into what Top Right Messi really means. Let's dive into a chart that answers a big question. Who have been the biggest attacking threats in football since the 1990s? The scatter plot. Using FBRF data from the top five European leagues from the 90s to the 2023-24 season looks at players with at least 7,000 minutes played. Here's how it works. The x-axis shows assists per 90 minutes, how often a player sets up a goal, ranging from 0 to 0.5. The y-axis shows non-penalty goals per 90 from 0 to 0 0.9. The size of each dot reflects minutes played. The bigger the dot, the more minutes. Players are also color-coded by position, forwards in blue, attacking mids and wingers in green, midfielders in pink, and defenders in orange. Let's start with the majority of players clustered toward the bottom left. These guys, like Ashley Cole and Keane, are averaging around 0.1 assists and 0.1 non-penalty goals per 90. They're mostly defenders and deeper midfielders, so their attacking output is naturally lower. Then you've got players like Xavi, Tony Cruz, and Santi Cazorla, midfield maestros with 0.2 to 0.3 assists and almost no goals. They're creators, but not goal scorers. Moving up, we've got the chance creators in the bottom right, like Ozil, Fabregas, and De Bruyne. These guys are assist machines, averaging 0.3 to 0.5 assists per 90, but their non-penalty goals are still low, around 0.1 to 0.3. De Bruyne, for example, is close to 0.5 assists per game. Insane creativity, but he's not a primary goal scorer. Di Maria and Muller are nearby, showing their playmaking prowess as attacking midfielders and wingers. Muller is higher up the y-axis, as he also has an incredible eye for goal. Now, let's look at the goal scorers in the top left. Players like Higuain, Aguero, and Lewandowski are here, with 0.6 to 0.8 non-penalty goals per 90, but only 0.1 to 0.2 assists. These guys are known for primarily scoring goals and do not rack up much assists. If we move a bit across the x-axis, we find Ronaldo. Ronaldo's dot is huge. He's played a ton of minutes and his 0.7 plus goals per game show why he's a scoring machine. Holland and Mbappe are also up here with over 0.8 goals per 90, but their dots are small, which means they haven't played much minutes compared to the other players on the chart. It becomes harder to maintain a high goal to minute ratio the more minutes one plays. Then we've got the double threats in the top right. Players who score and assist at an elite level. Neymar, Thierry Henry, and Mbappe are here, with 0.5 to 0.8 goals and 0.3 to 0.4 assists per 90. These players have all around attacking brilliance, but even among these legends, one player stands out. Lionel Messi is isolated in the top right corner with more than 0.8% non-penalty goals per 90 and 0.4 plus assists per 90. That's right. Messi scoring at the same rate as the best goal scorers like Ronaldo, while also assisting at the level of the best playmakers like De Bruyne. No one else comes close to this balance of scoring and creating. His dot is massive too. He's played a ton of minutes, and he's done this consistently for decades. This chart shows why Messi is the ultimate attacking threat. Since the 1990s, no one has matched his ability to both score and create at such an elite level. Ronaldo might challenge him slightly in goals, but Messi's assist numbers blow everyone away while still scoring like a top striker. It's unreal. All right, let's look at Exhibit B. We'll begin by looking at the top players who've won the most Man of the Match awards since 2009. Here's the deal. This chart tracks Man of the Match awards against the number of games played. The x-axis shows games played, ranging from 0 to 700, and the y-axis shows the number of Man of the Match awards from 0 to 350. The color gradient at the top that's the efficiency, how often a player wins man of the match per game, ranging from 19% in blue to a staggering 52% in red. Let's start with the main pack. We've got some of the biggest names in football here. Erling Haaland, Arjen Robin, Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, Harry Kane, Kylian Mbappe, Latan Ibrahimovic, and Neymar. These guys are legends, 
and their men of the match counts are impressive. Holland, for example, has 39 awards in 181 games. That's a 21.5% efficiency. Mbappe has 82 in 342, and Zlatan's at 96 in 396. All of their efficiencies are hovering between 19% and 24%. Then we've got Neymar, who's a step ahead. He's won 90 awards in 336 games. That's a 26.8% efficiency. Incredible, right? And just above him is Cristiano Ronaldo, with 176 awards in 612 games, giving him a 28.8% efficiency. They both fall in the 26 to 30% range. Ronaldo's consistency over such a long career is unreal. He's played nearly twice as many games as Neymar and still maintains that high rate. But then, there's Lionel Messi. Look at this. He's completely isolated at the top right. Messi has 324 Man of the Match awards in 628 games. That's a 51.6% efficiency. Let that sink in. Messi wins Man of the Match in more than half of his games. Ronaldo and Neymar, the closest to him, are at 28.8% and 26.8%, not even close to Messi's level. Messi's efficiency is nearly double Ronaldo's, and he's played almost the same number of games. This isn't just dominance, this is a different stratosphere. Messi isn't just the best, he's redefining what best even means. Whether it's his playmaking, his goals, or his sheer presence, he's winning man of the match at a rate no one else can touch. Let's move to the third data visualization. This time during a period that many called Messi a flop, his stint at PSG in League One. When Messi moved to PSG in 2021, expectations were sky high, but some fans and pundits labeled his time there a disappointment, pointing to fewer goals and a perceived dip in impact. But does the data back that up? Let's find out with this chart looking at League One players with a minimum of 500 minutes played. This scatter plot measures two key stats, progressive passes per 90 on the x-axis, that's how often a player makes passes that move the ball closer to the opponent's goal and progressive carries per 90 on the y-axis, which shows how often a player drives the ball forward toward the goal themselves. Together, these stats tell us who's best at advancing play, either by passing or carrying the ball. Let's start with the majority of players. You've got a big cluster in the bottom left, guys averaging around two to five progressive passes and two to four progressive carries per 90. These are your typical League One players, solid but not standout, then you've got players like Florian Tardieu and Johan Gastien, sitting around four to eight progressive passes and two to three carries. They're decent at moving the ball forward but not breaking any records. As we move up the chart, we see some bigger names. Bruno Guimaraes, Matteo Guendouzi, and Renato Sanchez are averaging six to seven progressive passes and six to nine carries per game. These guys are more involved in advancing play, combining decent passing with ball carrying ability. These are the midfield engines consistently driving their teams forward. Now, let's go even more top, where the elite carriers live. Neymar, Marco Verratti, and Di Maria are here, with six to nine progressive passes and an unreal 10 to 13 carries per 90. Neymar, in particular, stands out. His speed and dribbling make him a carrying machine, while still contributing with progressive passes. Angel Di Maria is also in this zone, with similar numbers, proving his class as a playmaker. But then, there's Lionel Messi, even in his so-called flop stint at PSG, he's an outlier in the top right. Messi is averaging 11 progressive passes per 90 and a staggering 12 plus progressive carries per game. That's right, even when people said he was struggling, Messi was still outclassing everyone in League One at moving the ball forward, whether by passing or carrying it himself. Compared to Neymar and Di Maria, who are already elite, Messi's got three to four more progressive passes while also being a better carrier. And against the average player in the cluster, he's tripling or quadrupling their numbers. This chart just proves that even on an off day or an off season, Messi is still untouchable. His time at PSG might have been called a flop by some, but the data tells a different story. He was still the best at advancing play in League One by a mile. So what have we learned when it comes to data? Lionel Messi doesn't just top the charts. He distorts them. He's not on the curve. He's not above the curve. He redefines the curve. Top right Messi isn't just a meme. It's a statistical reality, a shorthand for greatness, a reminder that even in the cold world of numbers, some players shine so brightly they leave the graph behind. Whether you're into eye tests or spreadsheets, there's one thing everyone can agree on. Messi is different.